Welcome to Arms Beer TV. I'm your host, On Me Kong, aka Beer Lover. Anyway, uh, we have Daniel Lehman today from uh, Global Beer Network. And you are based in New York, right? I'm based in New York. Our okay. company is based in uh, right outside of Boston, Massachusetts, okay. in the town of Middleton. Okay. So. Oh, wow. Right there. Mm. We're all the way down here to Me Kong for you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> So he's going to bring us a beer today from your portfolio. Indeed. This yep. is our actually flagship beer, one of you know, our most popular beer. And uh, obviously, you can tell by this tower that ah. uh, it is a beer that is a treasure to us and very important to Global Beer Network. Uh, it's a beautiful beer, Golden Drac. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can deduce some, um, but it means Golden Dragon. Golden Dragon? <laughs> yeah. Ah, a little bit. Hint a little bit. the color. Exactly. And the dragon. Yes, um, yes. And what's great about this beer, to know a little bit of history, what I think is great about Belgian beer, not only uh, the capacity they have for brewing great beers, mm -hmm. it's the history behind them. Okay. Uh, this is a brewer, I can speak for him and say that he is very uh, in tune to his local history. Uh, and this dragon was, it actually sits on top of a belfry in Ghent, Belgium. It's uh, made of pure gold, uh, and a belfry is the part of town that would actually um, preside over the town for, as a lookout for incoming armies, uh, but also it house uh, deeds of land and other important objects that the no nobility would want to yeah. keep safe. Mm. So the dragon hid the treasure. Guard the barley to make the beer. Guard the barley. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's what this is all about. And actually, the, it was a gift from a Norse king to Constantinople during the Crusades. Ah. And then uh, one of the you know uh, emperors of Constantinople was actually from Flanders. So he took ah. it back. He took it back Got to Belgium, you. put it on top of the belfry in Ghent, and it stood there for a long time until they fought with the Knights of Bruges mm -hmm. over it. Bruges lost, so it still resides in Ghent. Gotcha. So it's the treasure of Ghent as much as Guldendrock Ale gotcha. is a treasure of Ghent, Belgium. Some piece of history. A little bit. I, would never I have a little bit of knowledge in this head of yeah. things other than beer. But uh, to, to the beer, uh, Guldendrock okay. Ale, um, what is it? It's, we call it a dark, uh, strong dark ale. Like a strong golden ale would be a Duval or a Parat. Mm -hmm. This is a strong dark ale. And now what's, what's the uh, alcohol percent in this? 10.5 percent alcohol. Ooh. We think he lies to That's, us. Huh? It, I think it could be a lie because it yeah. sometimes hits you a little bit stronger. Um, but what's great about this beer and why it's veiled and so yeah. unique? They use uh, three different proprietary yeasts for their beers. Okay. Uh, but it's three different yeasts. Three different three yeasts. Different yeast. Amazing. Did not know that. But they actually wow. re-ferment in the bottle with a Bordeaux yeast, a wine yeast, so that allows the yeast to survive under uh, uh, the high alcohol. And allows this beer to age easily for 10 years without turning into that kind so of Madeira. So, two beer yeast and one wine yeast. Exactly. It's you guys got that? <laughs> Three yeast. So that's wow. what gives this Golden Drac its complexity, but also makes it the most dangerously drinkable yeah. beer from Belgium, in my opinion. And you can see by the color, obviously it's dark. Yeah. Some people see it, they think stout. Now, tell me, because I have never tried Belgian beer before. I have never <laughs> drink beer before. Really? So can you tell me the, 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 the proper style to drink a good Belgian beer? Um, well, obviously you want to yeah. pour with a, with a good amount of head on it. Okay. You want the aromas to come out, and what does yeast do? It doesn't only, mm. you know, ferment sugars into alcohol. It gives great fruity characteristics. And in this, mm. uh, their particular yeast has like a dried pear, dried pineapple uh, smell. So giving it a nice swirl is is totally, uh, okay. you know, acceptable. You can get your nose in there and, and picking it up. Now, what's great about this beer is you can see it's dark. A lot of people confuse it with the stout on my mm. appearance. But when it's brewed, it actually looks a lot like a, a duval color. But they yeah. add caramel directly into it. Ah. So caramel is actually the color of it, and that's what they use to prime the beer. Gotcha. So when they add that Bordeaux yeast, they actually add a little caramel too. The yeast has something to eat, uh -huh. but it also isn't just doesn't just sweeten the beer. It gives it another layer of complexity. So, God, that's why it's like a, a tough beer. process to make this beer. I know. A lot of love. It's, it's kind of, uh, you know, when I smell it, it's kind of like wineness of Roma to it. Yeah, yeah, and that's why, obviously, for this style, too, it, nobody knows what to call it. Is it a, a dark triple? Is it a strong dark ale? Is it a quad? Mm -hmm. um, but it really is a barley wine style. It's something that should be kind of enjoyed, like a, a nice glass of wine. Wait a minute. Belgian barley wine? Belgian barley wine. I have never heard of a Belgian <laughs> barley wine. So it should be, you know, it takes a little time to enjoy it, but I'm sure if you... Once you get uh, to learn about this beer after you drink one or two, yeah, they, yeah. they start drinking a little faster. So, to that, cheers. <laughs> All right, time to taste. Cheers. Give your tongue a little treat. Give yeah. your tongue a little treat. Oh, wow. To me, it tastes like a quad. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, that's what's great, too. Gulendrock's working on a quad. Yeah. And what, is that, what does that mean? So, you know, it's all... 
uh, up to the brewery to decide what they consider their triples and their quads. So mm. uh, a stronger Guldendrock would be upwards of 12% alcohol. This is 10.5. Wow. So to make a quad out of Guldendrock, it's yeah. going to have to get up there. So they're, they're working on that next. Yeah. It, it does have that, you know, dark fruit uh, mm -hmm. character that I taste. And then caramel. Yeah. yeah down the caramel. It's great. Yeah. yeah. But definitely what gives it its unique flavor that yeah. people come to love. Not only is it yeah. caramel, but it's that proprietary yeast that they use. Mm. Very unique. Wow. Great beer. What a lot of people don't know, too, or don't think of, you know, when you're aging beer, a lot of people age beer that's not supposed to be aged. Mm -hmm. um, Guldendrock is a great candidate for that because they're priming with caramel. Mm -hmm. It takes the yeast a long time to break it down, so it keeps the beer alive, keeps the yeast working. But because it's in this white bottle, it doesn't get sunstruck. So, so, so what you're saying is that you guys can age this Easily, beer. easily, yeah. Wow. I've had a 10-year-old bottle in Belgium, yeah. and it still pours with a good head on it. So Ooh. that means the yeast is still working, and obviously the longer you let this beer age, the bubbles get smaller, okay. so the head stays longer and mm -hmm. clings to the glass and gets that Belgian lace look. We love that. It's hey guys, buy some and put your cellar. It's great beer to age. Wow. Wow. So uh, since uh, next year is the year of the dragon, are you guys gonna do anything big well, with the? Uh, I just learned. Of, I just learned of this, so hopefully uh -huh. we can uh, you know kick off that year strong with a quad, and the quad's the wow. way to do that. Oh, so man, the quad. I can't wait for this. This 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 beer is just fantastic. Yeah, hopefully yeah, we'll I be back here. Can't say much quad, yet. You know? so, so be beautiful. I can't say much about this beer. Besides, it's it almost tastes like a perfect beer. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety nine point nine percent. It's my rating for this beer. Wow. It's that perfect, <laughs> or close to perfect. So there it is, uh, Daniel Lehman of uh, Global Beer Network. And uh, thank you for coming by the show. Thank and you uh, all when so we much. Uh, at the end of the show, we all say, "Beer is the answer." answer. <laughs> there it is. Peace out. <laughs>